sincerely happy to be alive. Amen. Happy to have the activity of our limbs, have our right minds. Just happy that God has showered down his grace and his mercy upon us once again. I wanted to know that in some parts of the world is already noontime. And so my brothers and sisters, we don't have to worry about waking God up this morning. He's been up all night and he's still awake. So come on, let's make some noise, amen. And give God the rightful praise that he so deserve. I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Stevens if he would come and bring us before the throne of God in prayer uh, for the call to worship and after the prayer, uh, Deacon Hampton is going to uh, remind us of one of what I think, based on my life experience, is one of the most greatest old hymns of the church. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Dr. Stevens. My faith looks up to thee, thy Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Hear us, Lord, hear us as we come before your throne, not worthy or deserving but because of your grace and your mercy, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who has given us his blood to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you. We thank you for this shepherd, our pastor, who has been leading us and guiding us and teaching us and empowering us to follow hard after thee. Thank you. Thank you for his family his wife, the first lady who stands by his side, his children that makes the both of them proud. We thank you. Now, Lord, we're here in this holy place, beseeching you to have mercy and to lend an attentive ear to our meager petition. Give strengthening to our words as we now make ready to worship and praise you, to lift your name, to magnify your name, hallelujah, to ascribe majesty and power to your name. Our souls rejoice and we say thank you. You brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Look what you did, Lord. You touched us early this morning before the news got back to glory. Shook us to the very sense of our duty. And you brought us to this praise, to this place of praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. You, you looked after us and you spared us sorrow and affliction. Instead, you gave us happiness and joy. Thank you, Lord. Now we're ready to praise your name. We're ready to lift your name. We're ready to call on your name. Thank you. As you said in your word that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus, Jesus 
Just at the sound of that name, Jesus, devils will flee and fly. But other than that, Father God, at the sound of that name, sick folk get healed. Confused people have their right minds again. And there's a place for healing and health and salvation. So as we praise your name this morning, we say thank you. As we lift your name this morning, we say thank you. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Let every heart in the building say amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen. Remain standing with us. Come to the old hymn of the church, number 135. Number 135 in the red hymnal. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Yes. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. Number 135.
know why we are shouting that chance praise God can you find at least three people at least three people and encourage them to praise God fellowship fellowship mm-hmm. praise God praise God praise God yeah yeah praise God praise God come on let's lift that again amen all over the sanctuary No harm, ain't no harm, ain't no harm in praising the Lord. My mind pray. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, why don't you come back with us all over the sanctuary? Praise God. Praise Him in the morning. Praise, Praise Him in the noon day. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him in the evening. on verse number four one more time when we've been there 10,000 years when we been there 10,000 bright shining as the sun days come on if you love the Lord why don't you show some signs amen Remain standing, if you will. Call to worship continues our responsive reading in consideration of our good tradition of memorializing, remembering, commemorating the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The responsive reading comes now, led by Dr. Stephen. Our responsive reading... 581 in the back of your hymnals the scripture reading section the election for this responsive reading has been selected from 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter 23 to through 34 for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, be ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 
Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Together? And if ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest So bless the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated.
that evening, before instituting this, he had prayer, and he prayed for these elements, just as we will today. Let us bow our heads. Eternal Father, we come before you this morning for one divine purpose, under one roof, that you would, Father God, just touch each and every one of us in this moment. We ask, Father God, that you bless this bread and this wine as you did on that night in the upper room. That we all, Father God, may have a right to that tree of life. Bless it now as you would have it fit as we become partakers of this, Father God. We just thank you for this blessing that you have set forth that we may be come to you in such a way. Cleanse us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Has anyone been omitted? And on that night, they all ate together. Afterwards, they sung a hymn and went into the Garden of Gethsemane. Let us give thanks this morning. To tremble, tremble, tremble. New Testament book of Philippians, chapter 1. Philippians, chapter 1. The reading comes from the New International Translation. Let us commence our reading at, at verse 27. Chapter 1. Whatever happens, we'll give the quiet moment. Philippians chapter 1. Verse. 27, as as you may be seated. Ch 
chapter 1, verse 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that ye stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. And this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have Come over to chapter 2, first verse. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort, comfort for his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something, something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Chapter 2, verse 5, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> Only for the purpose of you, the audience, being able to track us and trace us, we give a topic. I want to tag this message. I can only act like Christ when I learn to think like Christ. I can, I can only act like Christ, behave like Christ, when I learn how to think like Christ. The epistle, the word epistle, by definition meaning instructive letter, the instructive letter of Paul to the Philippians often referred to simply as Philippians because of the personal relationship that the apostle had come to enjoy with the saints in Philippi. It is the 11th book of this, our New Testament. According to the book of Philippians itself, a messenger, a delegate, had been sent to Paul, a fellow by the name of Epaphroditus. He, according to the second chapter of Philippians, verses 25 through 30, he was sent 
by the saints, by the local church in Philippi to share their gifts and show support with them towards the Apostle Paul. It's often, I don't, don't make it a habit of throwing stones, Sister Eagle, where is she? But I think you would relate to this, and this is not a throne's throw, Deacon Hampton. But hear me, outside of the message, we've come to an age now where oftentimes uh, people are asking, what does the convention, what does the association do for us? I had in my notes, but nobody going to say amen. But brothers and sisters, I would have us to know that churches make up associations. Churches, Brother Rigsby, makes up conventions. And the model in the scripture is not what they do for us. It's what we do for the work of the collective effort. It's in the text, amen, somebody. The saints in Philippi were not standing waiting for Paul and his great missionary work, this collaborate collective effort that he had gathered saints from all over, all over the known world within the body of Christ to send him something. They sent something to Paul. Y'all know to say amen. And so this messenger from Philippi, he has been sent Paul, he has gifts in his hand, and his purpose is to show the apostle that we, the local church in Philippi, we, the Philippians, we support the spreading of the gospel throughout the known world. If you had, if you had a pen and a piece of paper, I would suggest that you investigate Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 30, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. If, 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 you, had, if you had a note-taking tool, amen, I would suggest that we took a look at Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 30, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. Paul, the apostle or the letter here in the book of uh, Philippians, the 25th verse of chapter 1, he says, I think, I think that it is necessary, and if you would chime in and hear, and hear the spirit of this, this letter, he says, I think that it is necessary for me to send back to you your messenger." Listen, Paul has been having conversation. He's been able to hear the situations, the scenario, uh, the environment that's taking place in that local church there in Philippi. He says, I'm going to send Epaphroditus back, my co-worker, my fellow soldier, and he's also your messenger. And I'm, you, you, you sent him to take care of my needs. That's what he says in verse 25 of the first chapter. If you have it in your Bibles, say amen. amen. Watch verse 26 and hear, hear the passion behind Paul's writing. He says, for he longs for all of you and he is distressed. He is distressed because you heard that he was ill. He desires to be with you and He's somewhat stressed because perhaps you're concerned about him. He became sick while on his journey to come and see about me, the apostle says. Verse 27, indeed he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him. And not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him back so that when you see him again, you will be glad. And, and, and because he is there with you, 
Paul says, I will have less anxiety. Watch this. There's a reason. Something is going on here. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're starting to feel the vibe. 29. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and, and, and honor people like him. Wish I knew y'all were with me. Honor people who love the work of the church so much that, that they will carry the message. They would carry the support. They would be messengers and delegates to keep the local body connected with the universal body. Respect people like him. Y'all yeah, yeah. ain't saying nothing. Amen. And, and welcome him in great joy, verse 29, and honor people like him, verse 30, because he almost died. Almost died. He almost died not for selfish gain, but he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. I wish somebody was reading the Bible with me. I want you to understand this, brothers and sisters, during the execution of his responsibilities of travel to deliver their gift. Philippians 4, 17, note takers. Philippians 4, 17, this messenger, Epaphroditus, he contracted some life-threatening, weakening illness. And at some point, he recovers. It is at this time, whether it was premeditated or due to an extended stay with the apostle, that he and Paul, they had opportunity to have some very intimate conversations. Somebody ought to say man. amen. And in Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 through 30, Paul says, whatever happens, whatever happens, he writes back to the local church because he's had conversation with the messenger. And he says, listen, I love you all with all my heart. But after the fact that God has orchestrated for your messenger, Epaphroditus, to get sick and have to spend a little bit more time with me than we plan, I now understand that there are some concerns that probably, no doubt, need to be addressed. And Paul says this in the 27th verse of Philippians chapter 1, whatever happens, whatever you're going through, whatever you're having, having to deal with, I need you all to understand this. It is very important that you behave yourselves in the same way that Christ would behave himself. Isn't it something when you love somebody, when you've exalted somebody, when you've put somebody on a high horse and then you realize that that somebody is human just like you are. I wish I had just a few amens in the house. And Paul says, Philippians, y'all know I love you all. Y'all know that I've got this personal passion for you all, but I've had opportunity to have conversations with your messenger, and I understand that the same devil that's been bothering me, he's bothering you. But can I say something to you all? However you handle the situation, please, please, please handle it the same way Jesus would handle it. Is that helping anybody in here this morning? Is there anybody that thought about doing something their way, started, thought about, amen, carried out something their way, but you got a word from the Holy Spirit this morning? Please don't do it your way. Don't do You're going to mess it up. You're going to make a mess of it. Help me, somebody. Don't say what you want to say. Wait and hear from the Holy Spirit. Behave yourself. The same way Jesus would behave himself. And so my brothers and sisters, look at Philippians chapter 2, 19 through 24. He realized, he realized that the saints in Philippi, they were still in need of teachings. For Paul, and if you put this in context, and oftentimes we, we quote this verse, but not in the proper context, when Paul talks about to be absent from the bodies, to be present, for the Lord, he said, it was up to me. I'd rather be with the Lord, amen. But for me to live is gain for you. You've come a long ways, but yet have a long ways to go. Now listen, one of the attitudes, one of the internal organs of being that every believer ought to have is the attitude of humility. And I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I don't even know if you came to early morning service, but let me put this out there just in case you're here. I don't care how long you've been in the church. I don't care how, how much you think you know. 
I wish I had some help in here. All of us ought still be in learning mode. Because you don't know what you don't know. I wish I had some help in here. And when you love somebody, as Paul loved these saints in Philippi, he says, listen, God is going to allow me to live a little longer so that I can teach you a little bit more. Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, his conversations with the messenger leads him to warn them, listen, listen, don't think by any means that you are exempt from haters. Paul warns the Philippi, the Philippians, he warns the Philippi church, amen, to be careful of those dogs. How many of you all know we've got some dogs that are out to divide us? Somebody, amen, can I just be practical here for a second? There are people who just ride down Tamarind on Sunday morning and up and down 9th Street, and when they see what they think is a church full of people based on the cars outside, they get mad. Y'all act like y'all ain't got no haters. There are people that are just upset that by in seven years, Deacon Cooper, we ain't had no deacon preacher fight. There are some folk just mad minister of music choir that the choir ain't divided. Don't fool yourself. You've got some haters. Uh, there are some folk, if it ain't in the church, you've got some haters, amen, that individually just want to see you came down. Brother Riggs, they don't think you deserve to retire and still have life, health, and strength. All of us ought to recognize that there are haters who are out there. And Paul says, watch those dogs. Can the church say amen? Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, and let me tell you something, that the world can't help us, they can't hurt us, rather, on the outside as much as we can hurt ourselves on the inside. And here's the thing that really got me about this text, Reverend Williams, amen, as we investigated Paul, fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians today, there are some internal issues going on. Paul loves this church. If you had your notes, I promise you, you wish you wrote this one down. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, Paul plugs this piece in. He says, listen, and I'm pleading, I'm begging with those two sisters by the name of Euodia and Syntyche to be of the same mind within the Lord. Yes, I ask you, my true companion, help these sisters. Don't don't talk about them. Don't get on one side and another one get on another side because the church can do more damage to itself if we start fighting and siding and clicking. Y'all ain't helping me this morning on the inside. We've got haters on the outside that's already trying to destroy us, but the devil can't hurt us. Amen. We can hurt ourselves, and I need those two sisters to sit down and get that thing together because they're going to mess up things. I wish I had some help in here. And that reminds me of what our covenant says and what the Bible says. If you have an alt against your brother, if you have an alt against your sister, get yourself off the telephone. Help me, somebody. Don't Facebook it. Don't Instagram. You need to go and talk to that sister. And how y'all ain't helping me this morning. And have a conversation with that brother and see if y'all can get that thing together. And if y'all can't get it together, get you a witness or two. But we got too much stuff going on in the atmosphere and folk ain't even came together and tried to work that thing out and y'all know the devil is trying to tear up the church but we can't act like Jesus until we learn how to think like him y'all ain't gonna preach me hard this morning there's a teaching word here I hope somebody want to hear a teaching word this morning you can't act like Jesus until we learn how to think like him. And so the application thing that we ought to grab from this letter this morning is that we've got to learn or we have to apply or execute turning our knowledge into action. Can the church say, turn your knowledge into action? Philippians chapter 4, the ninth verse. Those of you that still have your Bibles, in 4 9, 
listen to what the apostle says. And I'm paraphrasing it. He says, don't just be hearers. The Bible says this in another place, but be doers of the word. Paul says, whatever you have learned, you'll see that, or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. And if we do this, the God of peace, he will be with you. In the words of my, words of my grandmother, is this hoping anybody? Say amen, somebody. Now, and I'm almost done. The Corinthians, I'm sorry, the, Philipp the Philippians, the saints in Philippi, they have what it takes to think and act like Jesus. The challenge is doing it. Applying it. Three things, three things. Their, their culture and their customs. First of all, their culture and their customs. Even their tradition, their root, gives them the ability to act and think like Jesus. Their culture and their customs allow them to embrace the fact that incarnation, God represented in the flesh, is a reality. Their custom, their culture, they're not opposed to the fact that a spiritual being has the ability to operate in that manner and still be God in the flesh. A person, incarnation by definition, a person who embodies in the flesh a deity, a spirit, an abstract quality. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through, 6 through 11. That's why Paul gives them this, this poetic presentation. He talks about how Jesus, the Son of God, has come. That's the story of Calvary. And he, he knows, he knows that they have no opposition to that. That's my brothers and sisters that makes it relevant to us. We as a people, we have no opposition, we have no teachings, we have no spirit that is in opposition that God can be God in heaven and yet still be God here on earth in the flesh. And not only does our culture or our customs are not opposed to that, we believe that it actually happened. Wish I had a few more believers in here. We believe that God really did send his son, Jesus the Christ, he on earth, died for our sins, help me somebody, and that Jesus literally lived a perfect life because he was God in the flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and everything that was made, amen, it was made by God, and we beheld his glory as, as the only begotten son of God. He came, he walked on earth anybody everybody I pray to God believe that God actually showed up on earth in the flesh so we have the ability we have what it takes to act behave and think like Jesus watch this brothers and sisters not only not only does their culture and their customs permit them to think like Christ but this is something I, I, want, I want to simply say their history. But I put it this way, just to keep the alliteration going. Their continuous and chronological record. What do you mean by that? They had history with God. And, and they can make reference. They had reference points to know that God knows how to deal with every situation. Their experiences reminded them that Jesus, first of all, was really God. He says in Philippians chapter 1, watch this, verse 3, I thank my God every time I remember you. Look at verse 4, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Look at verse 5, first Philippians, Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, verse 5. Because, here it is, of your partnership. Because of your partnership in the gospel 
from the first day until now. Verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. My mom used to always say this to me, Brother Kemp. She's always say, listen, it only, I, I think this is how she said it, trouble is easy to get in, but hard to get out. She, she would remind me, Deacon Cooper, she said, listen, baby, you've done a whole lot of good. You've done a whole lot of good, but people, people will easily forget your good when you do one, one bad thing. And that's why Paul says in verse 27, listen, I know, I know you've got some haters. I know you have some disagreements. But be careful how you handle this situation. Think like Christ. Investigate how is it that Christ would handle this situation. I, 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 it's in my spirit, so I guess it's going to come out in the pulpit. Uh, just the other day, uh, one of my crazy... Lord Philpott, crazy son. He got on Facebook, y'all, because somebody threatened him. I hope none of y'all didn't see that. Praise the Lord. I prayed hard that y'all wouldn't. He got on Facebook, Brother Risby, because, because somebody threatened him. I, I, I thought we, we learned that, hey amen, sticks and stones break my bones. Words don't don't hurt us. Sister Bullet, he got on Facebook with my last name. Say amen, somebody. I want everybody to know the corner and the street that he was on and calling out the perpetrator. Come, come get me. You said some blood gonna be shed. You, you, you. And let me tell y'all something. He used some words that us Sunday churchgoers don't use on Sunday. Some of y'all caught that amen. On Facebook Live. Can I tell you something? Listen, if you heard his story, you might be tempted to agree with him. Agree with his anger, his reason for being angry. And, 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 and perhaps we can justify our reason for being angry. But we cannot justify if we don't handle our anger the right way. Can the church say amen? I, I just wish, Apostle Paul says, I wish, amen, that y'all come to the conclusion, however you're going to handle this situation, that you handle it in the way that Jesus would handle it. I want to act like Jesus, but I can't act like Jesus until I learn how to think like him. I know I ain't got a whole lot of time. As a matter of fact, time is, is running on. So Paul reminds them that you all have the ability to think and to act like Jesus. Your customs don't oppose Jesus. Your, your experiences, the chronology of your experiences don't oppose Jesus. You know how good God is. You've seen him, you built this partnership with him and you've done good all this time. Don't mess up your good name. And then, brothers and sisters, Paul says, even your current crisis demands that you apply the attitudes of Jesus. What do you mean, your current crisis? Uh, if you were to read Philippians, the four chapters that Paul presents unto us after his conversation with Epaphroditus, Paul understands that there are haters in Philippi, Paul understands that there's some internal issues going on in Philippi, and can I just bring it from Philippi to West Palm Beach? Can I make it relevant to us? I wish I had a few more amens. My brothers and sisters, ain't no need of us faking it. Ain't no need of us trying to act like everything is all right. I wish I had a few more of y'all in here. Amen. The God of heaven knows that all of us have crises in our lives. All of us are dealing at one point or another with conditions and 
circumstances that are pushing us to make a decision. And can I stand tall this morning and just plead with all of us, whatever decision you make, think in the manner in which Jesus would handle that. That ain't going to make you shout, but it'll sure enough make you say, hmm. Because I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what's going on in your house. I don't know what's going on with your financial situation. I don't know what's going on with your children in college or out of college. I don't know what's going on on your job. I don't know what's going on on the inside of your body. But whatever is going on, Let's consider the manner in which Jesus would handle this. Can the church say amen? amen? In other words, as I close, let us cease from being only hearers, but be ye also doers of the words. Whatever we've learned from childhood, all of this time we've spent in the church house, all of these sermons that we've heard, whatever we've learned or received or seen in our Christian parents, let us put it into practice. And the God of peace, wish I had a holler, but I ain't got none. He will be with us. Can the church say amen? Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And then when I come and see you or only hear about you, I will know that you still stand fast in the spirit. And don't be afraid of those who oppose you. For God is with you. And if the Lord is with you, what's the whole world against you? Further, my brothers and my sisters rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. My brothers and sisters, watch out for haters. Watch as well as pray. And because everybody ain't gonna like you. And everybody ain't gonna howdy, howdy you. And don't put confidence in your flesh. What that said to me, Deacon Hampton, is that when I go out in the world, don't get caught up on my titles in the flesh. Don't get caught up on reverend and pastor and and don't get caught up on how long this flesh has been in the church. Because I ought to have some witnesses in here that the flesh don't care how long you've been in the church. The flesh don't care how many Bible studies you've attended. Somebody ought to wave your hand. Your flesh will let you down. Paul says, even I don't get caught up in the flesh. Amen. If I can be saved, I'd be saved by the flesh. I was born on the eighth day. I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. I've been to the best of schools. Can I tell y'all something? The flesh ain't going to help you. And when you get caught up in a situation, you got to depend on the almighty God. I like what the old saints used to say. They used to say, Holy Ghost. Don't leave me now. Holy Ghost, don't leave me. Anybody know that we need the Holy Ghost? Y'all ain't gonna make me preach hard. Y'all ain't gonna make me preach hard. Y'all didn't write hard, so I ain't gonna preach hard. But let me tell you something. If it had not been for the Holy Ghost, I would have lost my mind. If it had not been for the Holy Ghost, I'd have went to mama's house and went in mama's room. I know where she keeps a gun, amen. I'd have grabbed that gun, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. I need you to live a life that's worthy of the gospel. 
I got to learn how to act like Christ. I've got to learn how to think like Christ. In the church, say yes. Say yeah. Say yes. I want to learn how to be like Jesus. And as it relates to how you relate to your brother and your sister, let the mind of Christ be in you. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Let us all stand. The doors of the church, the doors of the house we got are open today. If you are in this place and you have not yet decided to think like Christ, you've decided not yet to surrender your heart to Jesus. We extend this opportunity and this invitation for you to make this public commitment. As we stand and as we sing, we, we are opening this opportunity for any person in this place to commit to Jesus so that he can sanctify your thinking. And as he does so, he can give you power over your flesh to fulfill his will in your life. So now is your opportunity as we sing. Thank you, our brothers and sisters. We want to behave ourselves in a manner that is pleasing unto Christ. And in order to do that, we have to have a mindset like Christ. Amen. Before we move forward with our offering, we want Sister Bryant and Sister Griggs to come. I saw Sister Griggs. I saw, yeah, amen, right in front of me. And they will um, tell us what is about to happen with our young people now that the summer months are upon us. I think Friday was the last day of school. Amen, amen, amen. Dr. Nance, you should see all of the, the new teachers, how happy they are. Amen. <laughs> Sister Kiera back there, she just shouting hallelujah. And um, Dr. Nance, I don't like to put you on the spot, but if you have some information from the school system that will help our young people uh, in the uh, summer school programs and things you've shared with us in the past, you can share. If not, you can give it to us next Sunday. Amen, amen. Sister Griggs. Uh, good morning, Rebecca. Uh, on the, the week of June 10th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're having Noah's Ark Summer Safari and do a vacation Bible school this year. It's going to be uh, three days of fun, feel Christian activity, uh, uh, featuring uh, Noah's Ark. We're going to uh, do a movie, Noah's Ark. We're going to uh, go to the, to the zoo on a Thursday and teach the children uh, just all about Christ and, and how Christ works his marvelous um, works in all things. So uh, please, we have, uh, we need some volunteers and we are looking for a few volunteers and we're looking for all the children to come out. So we have registration forms for you to sign your children up. Thank you. Sister Griggs and you know, Sister Map has been gone for a month, so I don't need her texting and emailing me saying, Pastor, where'd y'all get that money from? So that's coming from the youth budget, is that right? 
Where's Sister Mary? <laughs> <laughs> he, he thinks everything. Cause I don't know how much right? budget he thought he gave us. Anyway. <laughs> See, brother, 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 brother Riggs be be nice. So he be nice to you. Uh, some of it is maybe coming from, but we are we have had people who, do, who are donating the lunches. I have a person for Monday, Tuesday. When God is good, Amen. And He works things out for the, for for the glory. So we're looking for things to work out, and what's left over will come from the from the youth budget. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The watchman job is not an easy job. Amen. Sister Bryant. Okay. Good morning. So in addition to what Sister Gray said, starting on this Tuesday, you guys see on, the, on the, the monitors there, we are starting youth Bible study downstairs. Um, we are calling it the plug, okay? And people say, what is the plug? Okay, my mom has said that a hundred times. What y'all plugging? Um, the whole point of this is to plug our young people into Christ. And so we, it's got to be catchy for them. So we will start meeting downstairs uh, on Tuesday. Uh, there are flyers that we will be passing out to our, our students today that basically they will be coming home to you. So if you have a child uh, that's a part of Fresh Church, they will be pushing you to, to uh, bring them because there's incentives. If your child comes to all eight sessions, there will be some type of incentive of, I don't know what's going on here, incentive. Um, so just so you know that, parents, your kids are going to push you. And that means that you, you come to Sunday, you come to prayer Bible study upstairs while the kids are downstairs. Y'all get it? Amen. All right. So that's the plan there. And then in addition to that, pastor had asked me, I, people ask me what my day job is. I work for Florida Power and Light, uh, which is the utility company. Do you all have these? We put these Sister, she's going to speak briefly to this hurricane kit. Ushers, will you help us? They're out there somewhere. So yeah. on your way out this morning, be sure to pick up In the a, a checklist. Uh, this is hurricane season, guys. Um, when hurricanes come, you will notice that the, the shelves are empty. They're bare. So we don't want our members or any of our family and friends waiting to get their supplies. There is tax-free right now. This is the time for you to go out and buy your batteries, buy your tarps, don't wait. Um, when you need a tarp, it'll be too late because there won't be any tarps. Um, so just get the things that you know you need, some canned goods and what have you to be ready for the storm season. Um, as the weeks go by, I'll come back and kind of share with you all uh, the thoughts. We, we uh, at FPL have a connection with the weather uh, department. And so we kind of know what the, the summer looks like, and it looks like it's going to be a bad summer, but God's in control, right? Uh, that's only what man is saying. So we'll come back and make sure that you all, I'll come back and say, hey, here's our checklist. Take that checklist and use it as a checklist. Don't feel as though you have to buy everything that's on the checklist, but look at the checklist and the things that you need or you think you might need, go ahead and get it now. Don't wait until the last moment. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Both of you so much. Sister Eagle, will you come? Brother Lester, Sister Eagle has something for you, sir. Amen. Sister Philpart was the instructor when Brother Lester completed membership orientation. So as much as he said that, as much as he said you don't have to make a big deal, uh, his teacher said, oh, yes, you do. So, Brother Lester <laughs> and Sister Andrea Johnson Stubbs. Andrea did. She's here. She's here. Sister Andrea, you're not here? We got the wrong last name? There's an Andrea and Brittany sitting right there, right? Brittany. Andrea is right, right? I got the right first name, but the wrong. Okay. All right. All right, Brother Lester, it's your show. Look at Dean Cooper over there talking about, man, 
Deacon Cooper, you know those ladies' names? At least I be trying. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Our trustee ministry is coming now. If you haven't, if you had, if you hadn't heard, uh, we have postponed the May business meeting, and we want to be transparent. One of the main reasons, uh, when our assistant administrative staff person abruptly had to move it through us in a little fizzle uh, we're working through that sister Chelsea just wave your hand I want New Bethel to really uh, show some love for Chelsea Williams uh, she has come in and assisting sister Seabrook in getting our numbers and she has mama Lang who definitely gonna beat me for calling her name but sister Lang thank you Thank you so much, you and Chelsea. I thank you, our trustees, thank you. Our deacons gave us the blessing. We will not have business meeting in May. We'll pick that up, the next scheduled business meeting, uh, somewhere at the end of July, 1st of August. Uh, Chelsea is on her way to Warner Southern, Warner Southern University. When, when are you leaving? sometime in August, early August. So we are praying and believing and trusting God that he is going to position us with someone who can grab it as fast as she has grabbed it. And I need those of you who are prayer warriors uh, to, to help us with that, uh, help us pray uh, for that. But thank you all, Chelsea and Sister Lang and the trustees and to all of you, the patience uh, you have had with us. I can tell you this though, without even seeing the um, financial report from last month, just based on how we operate, uh, we don't, the church does not have an automatic system of revenue. I say this to people all the time, the reason why government is able to run, people come in on Monday and drink coffee till noon, then turn their computers off Thursday and don't turn it back on till Monday is because the government has automatic cash flow, our tax dollars. Somebody say amen. The church does not have that. The church is totally dependent upon week in and week out, Monday in and Monday, a month in and month out on the gifts, the contributions of the people. And, and I say this in love. I say this in love. I mean this, Sister Griggs. Even when we say, well, I'm going to take my contribution and help the children or do this, you set us back if you do that because the totality governing of the church is dependent upon the gifts of the people. We should add a few more amens. And so this is the first Sunday, the first uh, Sunday of the month of June, and we need a million dollars. So. Can y'all bring us a million dollars? If we ever get a million dollars, we'll be good for the rest of the year. Let the church say amen. Uh, us just will you come, us just will you come. Us just will you come and give us directions. Don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. We can't beat God giving. Even if we try, the more we give, the more he is going to give back to us. And giving, giving of our gifts is a symbol, a sign a measure of our love towards God. Amen. Brother Terry. All of us stand, starting from the rear. Bring ye your gifts facing the west, facing the west. Bring ye the gifts. Bring ye your tithe, your offering, your kingdom gifts. 
Amen. Let us be consistent and constant even in these summer months. Even in these summer months, let us let us be consistent with our giving to God. So happy to see uh, Deacon Deacon Cooper. Come on, let's see uh, how many of us know together. We ought to know everybody's name. Sister Bentley and S Sister Donna, Brother Kemp, Brother Brother Tate Tate. Trying to get that name, Trey, Brother Trey. Amen. Sister Sharon. Did I get it right? Nope, I got it wrong. Uh, Sister Pippa is not close to me. Uh, where is she? Uh, brother, brother, um, brother Tommy, will you ask that young lady behind you? Say, Pastor, done forgot your name. No, no, she's the one that saying he better not forget my name. That's Sister Erica. She's visiting with us. She grew up in this church. Is that right? Erica, did I get it right? Elizabeth, amen. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, bless the gifts and bless the mind of our pastor, amen. Love you, love you, love you, amen, amen. Sister Elizabeth, I met Sister Elizabeth in the parking lot this morning. I thought she was you, Sister Bird, because y'all both have Chrysler 300s. But she, she actually grew up in our church. She grew up in this church and she frequents uh, coming back and I can just discern in her spirit that God may bring her back permanently. Amen. Amen. If we do, we have any guests, any visitors here this morning. If all hearts are clear, all hearts are clear. Sunday school is this morning. Our, our women's class will be here. Uh, Sister Pam, yes, ma'am. All right, Sister Pam, you. It's it's. Oh, who's born in the month of June? Any of our June babies, Sister Valerie, brother, amen. I usher, uh, well, my mind is bad this morning. Oh, Lordy Jesus, amen. Brother Parker, amen. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Sister Bullet, your birthday's in June? You gave birth, the, the young man that just left, amen, amen. you're not part of a ministry, but we want to make pastor's anniversary the best one ever. Last year was the best one, but this year we want to make it the best one. So anybody wants to contribute to your earth to raise your hand, they will bring an envelope around. All ministries to your lead servants, they have a letter from the pastors of the ministry about what your instructions for what you should do to the pastor for his anniversary. Thank you. Sister Pam. All hearts are clear. Let us stand. Our men's Sunday school class will be downstairs. Sister uh, Phil Park, Reverend Allen, if and when you see Sister Eagle come to your class, class, will you give her at least three minutes to talk about the upcoming Congresses of Christian Education? Our, nas our uh, National Congress in June, our District Congress in July, and our state congress in August, uh, June, July, and August, she will be talking about the district congress is right here in Palm Beach County at the St. John uh, Missionary Baptist Church. And we're hoping, uh, Sister Esther uh, Deacon Henson, that we could really push and promote our young adults to participate in that in some form or fashion. God, our Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for every ministry who participated in this worship experience this day. Every person under the sound of my voice, uh, those who were here and had to leave, we give them the blessing of the benediction as well with permission from your Holy Spirit. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, be 
majesty, dominion, and power of now and forever. Amen. Amen. If you all see some of us acting a little cheerful in the month of June, that's because we're on our way to Alaska. Amen. Those of us who are cruising, we are, our hearts, our minds are just keeping us, keeping us excited. Our Sunday school superintendent has arrived, Deacon Williams. Amen. And we're going to yield to him, all of the Sunday school participants, in consideration that we're already over time. Will you give Deacon, Deacon Williams your attention? 